Hello everyone, thank you for attending my virtual presentation. So I am Guy, I'm a master student from EPFL and ETH Zurich uh, in Switzerland, and I've been working with Arma Suisse uh, on privacy in general aviation, and most particularly on the recent attempt from the FAA in the US. First, why do we need privacy in general aviation? In the recent years, a lot of articles underline privacy issue in general aviation. For instance, it would be possible to predict a company merge and acquisition by tracking a company aircraft, as demonstrated in Bloomberg article. It is also possible to track diplomats' um, trips to foreign country, which is of course not desirable, or to track the use of corporate check. Furthermore, I guess that pilots just don't want to be tracked on flying, so that's why uh, privacy policy is needed in general aviation. But before diving into the actual policy, I will quickly introduce aircraft communications. Aircraft need to be identifiable at all time when flying for uh, obvious security reasons. So first, it can be identified by the tail number, which is the unique registration uh, by the national authority. It's also called N number uh, in the US. And this number uh, can never be changed. So that is the number that is usually printed at the back of the aircraft or on the tail. Uh, aircraft can also be identified by their ICAO address, which is a 24-bit transponder ID um, that is assigned by the International Civil Aviation Organization. And there is a direct translation between the tail number and the ICAO address uh, in the US. So if you're interested, uh, I wrote a converter that is uh, available on my GitHub. Um, and aircraft can also be identified by their call sign, which is a unique flight identifier, and it can be changed for each flight. And for instance, uh, private aircraft often use their uh, tail number as a call sign. Aircraft use ATSB, standing for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, to communicate with the ground station and with other aircraft. ATSB equipment is mandatory in many countries, such as the US, Australia, and European country. I will not explain in detail how ADSB operates, but what we need to know is that uh, basically aircraft broadcast twice a second information such as their position, velocity, etc. And these broadcasts are identified by the ICAO address and the call sign of the aircraft. Anyone equipped with a cheap software defined radio can receive this broadcast uh, from a distance of 600 kilometers. Um, Crowdsource network try to cover large areas with antenna and software defined radios in order to get a global ADSB coverage and make aircraft trajectories publicly available online. Using a crowdsource network, it is trivial to track an aircraft using uh, only its ICAO address or its call sign. Aircraft can change their call sign for each flight, but not their ICAO address, so they are actually easy to track. So this situation is a serious issue for um, aircraft and passenger privacy. And until recently, the only way aircraft operator could protect themselves from being tracked was to ask kindly crowdsource network to make tra uh, tracking unavailable for the aircraft. But some crowdsource networks do not offer this service. Um, concerning these issues, the FAA published the following statement. FAA acknowledges the desire of some operators to limit the availability of real-time ADSB position and identification information for a specific aircraft. To address privacy concerns, the FAA has initiated the Privacy ICAO Address program to improve the privacy of eligible aircraft. So this Privacy ICAO Address program allows enrolled aircraft operator to periodically change their ICAO address, acting as a pseudonym. So if the aircraft operator simultaneously changes the ICAO address and the call sign of the aircraft, it makes the aircraft harder to track. Uh, this program is unfortunately, uh, at least for now, limited to aircraft register in the US using a specific ADSB system and a third party call sign um, just for uh, flights in the domestic US airspace. Which means that if an aircraft uh, wants to fly abroad, it has to use its uh, permanently assigned ICAO address and is automatically revealed uh, to anyone that wishes to track it. Um, in the first phase of the program, the FAA will monitor the program and a new privacy, uh, privacy ICAO address or PIA can be request, requested every 60 calendar days. And in the second phase, the program will be transitioned to third 
third party call sign providers and the PIA change frequency will uh, go down to 20 business days or uh, 28 calendar days approximately. To illustrate the privacy improvement, we show an aircraft identified by its ICAO address landing at an airport. On ground at the airport, uh, the operator will request a new privacy ICAO address and program it into the aircraft transponder and change the aircraft call sign before its next flight. So an adversary can observe that an aircraft with ICAO address A12345 arrive at the airport and that another aircraft whose ICAO address is ABCDEF left the, air the airport later on. If the aircraft is the only one that stay at the airport uh, for the given time frame, then identifying that A12345 and ABCDEF is actually the same aircraft is trivial. But if multiple aircraft enrolled in the PIA program are changing their ICAO address in the same airport during the same time period, it is not possible to link accurately aircraft arriving at the airport with the aircraft leaving the airport. So the best attack is in fact to take a random guess. So in order to maximize the privacy of aircraft using this scheme, we need to maximize the number of aircraft using a PIA and using the same call sign provider changing their PIA simultaneously at the very same airport. So that's a lot of condition, a lot of parameter that can uh, influence the, the privacy level and we're going to discuss that in details. So here is the bigger picture of the ideal system where all aircraft change their identifier for each flight without any side channel information. So a global adversary can observe the flights, but it is hard to link uh, accurately a flight from a given aircraft. Uh, you, you cannot distinguish um, aircraft when they are flying if they change their ICAO address and call sign um, at each stop. So this result actually um, in an asynchronous free route mixnet where all aircraft stay inside the mixnet forever. In order to quantify privacy performance of such a system, we will look at its traceability index, which is defined as the expected ratio of successfully tracked aircraft over time. Here is an example. Time is represented on the x-axis and traceability index of the system is represented on the y-axis and the traceability index of the, this example system after 150 days is 50.3%. From the beginning of the year, we observed the, the US airspace through the CrowdSource network, uh, OpenSky networks, and detected that 16 aircraft are using a PIA address. Nine of them are using a DCM call sign and seven of them are using a FFL call sign. Those are two distinct set of aircraft. We observed the aircraft changing their ICAO address to a PIA and some of them didn't even update uh, their call sign. So that's trivial to track them even if they wanted to enroll to this privacy um, program. So we did not observe any uh, PIA change, although some operators have been using the PIA for much more than 60 days. We observed that all ICAO addresses that we suspected to be PIAs uh, are in the N number range from N41000 to N42 and that 1062 official FAA registration look like the one on the right um, so that is reserved with no fee on the 1003 uh, 20, uh, 2019 by the SBS program office. And I will now explain an attack on how to track aircraft and roll in the PIA program. Uh, so the first step is obviously to identify a target aircraft and run this program. Then we need to associate the privacy ICAO address with an actual aircraft regist registration. And finally, we need to monitor every PIA change of this aircraft. To detect an aircraft using a PIA, we first look for flights using an ICAO address um, in this given range, so the hexadecimal range. And then we check in the FAA registry if the associated N number is reserved uh, with no fee by the SBM program office. And if it is the case, then we're almost sure that the, this aircraft is using a PIA. After we identify the target aircraft, we need to find its original registration. 
To reach that goal, we need to find the very first flight where the privacy ICO address PIA1 was used. So that is our target uh, PIA. So in our example, as the flight departs from Chicago, we need to find all aircraft that landed at the very same airport in Chicago before the departure of the red flight. So these aircraft are the candidates and we need to eliminate all of them uh, but one. For instance, after the departure of the red flight, um, an aircraft which is also identified uh, by the address IK01 is observed leaving Chicago. So this aircraft is eliminated. Um, then the aircraft identified by the IK address IK02 is observed flying back to its origin, so there is only one candidate left, um, which is our target aircraft that changed its IK address from IK03 to PIA1. So we de detected the, the IK address change. Once we know uh, IK03, uh, we look for the associated N number, so we do the translation, and we look for the associated N number in the FAA registry to find the actual aircraft registration containing um, all of the owner's details, like the name, the address, and everything. And so once we have the actual aircraft registration, we only need to monitor the PIA change, which is essentially the same operation as described previously. Note that if multiple aircraft are changing their PIA at the same airport during the same time period, we have to select uh, one at random and the tracking may be inaccurate. It, but it is also possible to observe flying patterns of the possible candidates to increase the probability to select the correct aircraft uh, according to its pattern after the change. We built a simulator to help us predict how the PIA program would scale if significantly more aircraft joined it. This simulator takes as parameter a number of aircraft, a number of airports, the average aircraft flight frequency, the PIA change frequency, and also the, the simulation duration. So once the simulation starts, an aircraft will be picked at random and will fly to a random airport and then an, another aircraft would be chosen at random, flying to another airport, um, and so on. So, as the, the trajectories are random, the simulator is not totally realistic, but it provides a lower bound to the traceability index, um, as a random flight maximizes the entropy of the system. The simulator is available off GitHub, if you want to check it out. And we implemented the, the previously described attack um, to show uh, the, the performance when we um, make vary the simulator parameter. On this graph, we see the traceability index curve for a set of 200 aircraft and 100 airport over a year, where aircraft update their PIA respectively every 60 calendar days, as is phase one of the program, so that's the green curve, um, 20 business days, which is 28 calendar days, so that's the orange curve for phase two of the program, and every 10 day in blue, that is just to show the difference. So we see that after a year, the traceability index of the 60 days frequency update is uh, at 30%, whereas the score is, the, the same score is reached after only uh, 101 day and 37 days for the 28 and 10 days um, PIA update frequency. So updating the aircraft PIA as often as possible um, gets the, the, the best privacy for the system. Um, now we make the aircraft fleet size vary while keeping the PIA update frequency to 28 days. So a fleet is a set of aircraft using a PIA and the same call sign space. So all of the aircraft are using a DCM call sign or all of them are using a FFL call sign. So we go from a fleet of uh, 50 aircraft in blue to a fleet of 500 aircraft in red. And we see that the traceability index uh, after 150 days go from 87.9% for the 50 aircraft fleet down to only 1.5% for the 500 aircraft fleet. So these curves really show that maximizing the number of aircraft for a fixed set of airports uh, minimizes the traceability index of the system, which is what we want. Um, some obvious improvement to the PIA program would be to add an international policy so that aircraft uh, do not need to use their permanently assigned ICAO address uh, when flying abroad because that reveals um, their position and 
but also uh, which um, PIA they used in the past. And so it would be uh, easier to track um, uh, all of their flight history until the moment they, they flew abroad. And uh, it would be also good to make uh, all ADSP equipped um, aircraft eligible to enroll in this program uh, in order to maximize the, the number of aircraft. And uh, all aircraft using a PIA should use the same call sign range, uh, which is not the case currently, as uh, you can use the program with a DCN and FFL call sign, so that makes two distinct uh, sets of aircraft, um, one for each call sign provider. Um, as the privacy is maximized when aircraft change a PIA as often as possible, a major improvement to the program would be to allow aircraft to update their PIA for each flight. This gives us the best um, theoretical privacy performance without modifying aircraft trajectories. But it comes at a price, so it introduces extra work for the administration that has to keep track of all PIA changes, and it takes extra effort for aircraft operator to program the new PIA um, uh, before each flight. So on this graph, uh, we can see the traceability index reached by a PIA change for each flight uh, in green, uh, compared to the traceability index uh, of the program in phase one and two in orange and blue. And we can see that uh, so the current PIA program is still very far from the best possible performance. Another major possible improvement is to make all aircraft change their PIA simultaneously. This method would consist in making all aircraft owners update their PIA on or before the first flight after a given day. This would help maximizing the number of aircraft updating their PIA during the same time period at the same airport as they all update their PIA at the same time. This strategy would cause no extra cost for the administration as there would be the exact same number of changes and could even be adopted without any official changes in the program uh, if, for instance, a group of aircraft operators agree on the dates at which they will update their PIA. The drawback of this method is that privacy performance is still far from the theoretical maximum, but it's still um, better than in the regular PIA policy. So this graph represents the traceability index curve of the 28 days update policy uh, with the PIA update uniformly distributed in blue. 28 days policy where all aircraft update their PIA simultaneously in orange and in green the best uh, theoretical performance where uh, aircraft change their PIA for each flight. So we observe a major improvement for the simulation of that policy uh, compared with the uniformly distributed one. Uh, for instance, after 150 days, the traceability index goes from 56.9% uh, in the regular PIA than to 313 in the enhanced version. To conclude this presentation, we showed that the PIA program makes it slightly harder to track aircrafts using ADSB data from CrowdSource networks. It just makes it more annoying to retrace from a privacy ICAO address back to the aircraft owner, but it's still possible, so in a sense, the PIA program does not really meet uh, its privacy goal. We show with the simulator that even with a much larger number of aircraft using a PIA, we can still track a large proportion of them over time, even if they update their PIA as often as possible. And we propose two concrete solutions to improve the privacy in the PIA program. So if you want more details about our work, um, please make sure to check out our paper when it's out. And uh, finally, my take home message is uh, if you get to use this program, please make sure to update your privacy ICAO address as often as possible to increase your privacy level and others' privacy level.